Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today is August the 26th, and we have business meeting tonight at 6 o'clock, and we have the Christmas cantata reveal at 7 o'clock. Uh, in the weeks to come, if that fits in your schedule and you have a heart for it, I know that Miss Stephanie and the choir would welcome you and your presence to come and, and uh, learn the cantata and, and be a part of that ministry when it comes in, in December. Uh, I want to remind you, school will be starting here September the 8th. Uh, our teachers are already at it, trying to figure out just how they're going to do school this year. But I uh, want to just ask you to be in prayer for the teachers right now in prayer for the students as they get ready uh, to engage in school work. I know something that they're all uh, missing and doing that face to face time. And I want to say uh, that we do start our new Sunday school year, uh, the first Sunday of September, and uh, things are going well in Sunday school. Uh, and as we've been watching and, and, and paying attention to all of the COVID-19 stuff, uh, we have not had any incidents uh, in regard to people here uh, being infected with the coronavirus. And uh, of course we go around and several people, different ones, uh, go around and pray uh, the protection of the Lord on our building every Sunday morning uh, just for that reason. The, the county still asks us to wear masks, and I uh, just want to put that out. That is uh, an executive order from our uh, uh, county chairman, and, uh, and so just remind you of that. But, but I just want to encourage you, if inside you can begin to get a peace from the Lord, uh, things are going well, and uh, our Sunday school classes are doing uh, what they can, uh, and I'm not going to say that they're social distancing by being six feet apart, uh, but they, we are encouraging the mask and uh, people wearing masks. And uh, but the the bottom line is, is so far uh, there have not been any incidents of an infection taking place from from here, and uh, we certainly would deal with that and respond in appropriate ways if, should that ever happen. I just uh, encourage you, it's great to be in the house of the Lord and to do Sunday school together week to week. Today I want to turn to a passage of scripture from Ecclesiastes chapter three, and this is in regard to uh, time and a season for all activities. So just listen while I read these verses. There's an occasion for everything and a time for every activity under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to avoid embracing, a time to search and a time to count as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his struggles? I have seen the task that God has given people to keep them occupied he has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also put eternity in their hearts. As I read that passage of scripture and, and just do a little count, and uh, I don't think I've ever counted all of these until uh, looking at this passage of scripture uh, here this week, but there are 28 different activities that are listed. I think the King James says there's a season for everything. Uh, the Holman translation, which is Lifeway's uh, production, uh, says there's an occasion for everything. And then uh, Solomon lists these 
28 activities. And they're listed in such a way so that there are 14 sets or 14 pairs of opposites. Uh, for instance, a time to laugh and a time to mourn, a time to love and a time to hate. And uh, boy, that, you know, that time to love and a time to hate, if one tries to, uh, you know, look at that, a time to hate, when would there be a time to hate? Well, uh, we're instructed by scripture to hate evil. You know, there is a time, there are occasions, uh, but as we read from the Word of God, as God, the Holy Spirit, uh, inspired Solomon to write these things, uh, there is a, is a time for all of this. Even though they're opposites, there are times. Now, here's the thought that comes to me. Uh, how in the world are we to know when it's a time to be at peace and it's a time to be at odds. You know, how are we to know when it's a time to laugh and a time to mourn and, and so on and so forth? How are we to get all that straight? And then you multiply me by however many are a part of the fellowship of this one congregation. How are we all to get it right? And then the thought struck me real strongly in regard to verse 11. And he has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also put eternity in their hearts. And I hadn't really gotten this until the last few days in regard to this passage. I, I've always valued the importance of the Holy Spirit. But it occurred to me that God gave us he placed eternity in our hearts by placing and indwelling us with the Holy Spirit when we trust Christ as our Savior. And so we have God's eternal Spirit living in our hearts to guide us so that we know when it's a time to love and a time to hate. And again, as I thought through it at first, I thought, well, I can't think of a time to hate, but there is a time to hate evil, unabashedly hate evil. Uh, I do not like the activity uh, that is allowed and called good in so many areas, even in, in our own culture. And uh, as we're called on, when the evil one has had his way of influence and brings about evil activity, uh, that activity is something that would give cause to hate. But back to Holy Spirit, it is so important that we as a congregation, as a local body of believers, that we lean on the person of Holy Spirit and, in order to get, get it right. Uh, to get it right means that we walk in freedom, we walk in liberality. Uh, we're, you know, we're able to get at uh, life in, in, in a flowing type way. And there is unity and accord. But if we don't get it right and we don't walk in the spirit, uh, then it gives cause for bitterness. It gives cause for animosity. And it gives, gives cause for disunity in a fellowship. There is a time for everything as God would lead us. The important thing is that we walk in the Spirit so we know God is leading us. And when that happens, oh, it's a beautiful thing. And I value so much the Spirit that's in our church. And that's why, as I was making the Sunday School announcements earlier, that I invite you to come and, and, and try to come back. And, and I know if you're uncomfortable, I don't want you to come back until you feel that peace and that comfort. But I want to encourage you that there is a good spirit and a good peace. And, and I believe a good respect for one another in regard to this whole pandemic uh, and respecting one another. I believe that there's a good spirit in our, in our fellowship right now. I don't know anyone that is uh, acting 
here at church acting flippant about anything, but there's a good respect for everyone. There's a good spirit right now. So I, I want to encourage you to come and be a part of uh, what we're doing. If you're not comfortable, uh, we know of classes that are doing the face-to-face -face time plus Zooming, and they've uh, added that element of being able to Zoom with those members that aren't. And, and so we have those members that are uh, actually a part of the class that we teach from here, and uh, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer for just a moment. Father, we thank you so much for your spirit. And we thank you, Lord, as we look at, at, at this passage of Scripture and see how many variables of activities that are involved in trying to get it right and trying in our own thought process and our own mind to know what's right and what's wrong at any given time. Uh, that's an impossibility for us, but not with your Holy Spirit. And so I thank you that you have placed eternity in our hearts so that we have your spirit to guide us to get things right in their time. And Father, as we've experienced it many, many times, it is a beautiful thing. And we thank you for that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.